Hey guys, usually I'm coming to you talking about fishing and outdoors related videos, but today I'm interested in showing you what I've done with my front lawn, and that's finding a super uh, drought resistant, green, affordable lawn replacement option. The magical plant is Lipia or Phyla notiflora. Now this is not a monoculture lawn. As you can see, there's still plenty of areas where there's other plants that have popped up as well too, but 90% plus is Lipia or Phyla notiflora. Some places call it fog fruit um, or turkey tangle root. Uh, it is native to Southern California, at least according to Calscape. And when I started this project, I had your traditional kind of neglected um, urban front lawn. I wanted to turn it into something that would not require anywhere as much water, still stay green throughout the summer, and still be amendable to a little bit of walking on as needed. I'll show you some before and after pictures of kind of where we're at now, but essentially I first ripped out the lawn, um, did it by hand, don't be like me, get a tiller or hire someone to do that. And then I planted something called yarrow. And that's listed as lawn replacement in some circles. And it may do well, but not in the Inland Empire. At least in my experience, there's still a little bit of yarrow left over. You'll see it peeking through in some of the shots. This is yarrow right here. Another native plant, it just simply needs a little too much water and moisture and grows a little unruly for my liking. So after a half year or more with yarrow, where it just didn't really work out, I went and had the a wonderful task of ripping out the lawn again, which I did. And this time I used a tiller, got a little bit more smart about it, and put in drip irrigation instead of sprinklers, um, and then put in uh, lipia all throughout. And if you're looking at this closely and saying, hey, this looks a lot like Kirapia, you're not wrong. This is the native, the non-sterile, non-hybrid form of Kirapia. I decided to go with Lipia because it was a fraction of the cost for a flat of Lipia compared to a flat of Kirapia at the time when I purchased it. I've looked at the prices now and it seems that continues to be the same. And planted these in the heat of summer, um, which would seem insane. The planting recommendations I followed were the same ones for Kurapia, which was the, to plant during the growing season, which tends to be when the sun is out more and when it's hotter. Um, I think I planted it between July and September. Um, that worked amazingly well. The plants grew aggressively. They grew quickly. You can see this animation here uh, over six weeks, the coverage that occurred. Uh, and I've been very happy with the result. The maintenance that's been required has been really low. Uh, honestly, there's been some weeding and there's been a little bit of edging and that's it. I don't need to mow it. I found that in areas where it's more shade than actual sunshine, the lapia isn't gonna grow as dense. It's gonna grow more leggy and more thin and won't provide as much weed suppression. So keep that in mind if you have a yard that is more shade than sun. Now, Lapia, while it's listed as being native, also has the benefit of, once it gets into its growing season, having these beautiful little flowers, um, a little bit like clover flowers that pop up. They're kind of white and purple all over, really attractive. They're not only attractive to me, but they're also attractive to bees and other pollinators. Uh, you can see them all over in this video. If you're deathly afraid of bees, Lipia may not be a great option for you. Um, I love having bees around. I've really gotten into gardening and planting, as you can see with all these <laughs> planters here. I want to have pollinators around in my yard. I think that makes for a healthy, healthier yard habitat, and I'm happy that Lapia is helping do that. So you may be wondering about the actual drought tolerance and water requirements of Lapia. I found that, in general, uh, I only need to run my drip irrigation maybe a few minutes a day during the hottest time of the year, and I can get by with just running it a few times a week during the cooler time of the year. Keep in mind, drip irrigation has extremely low water output compared to a traditional sprinkler. Uh, I think I'm using half gallon an hour drippers, 
and they're only running a few minutes each day at most during the hottest triple digit 115 degree weather we get here out in the Inland Empire. Finally, one thing I forgot to mention and a added benefit of Lapia I did not expect was that not only does it propagate well as far as growing and spreading, but when I have to clean up the yard a bit and cut off the pieces that are growing into my mulch beds or onto my sidewalk, I can just dunk those in a bowl of water and especially during the growing season within less than a week they sprout roots and I can plant those in bare spots or dry spots or other parts of my yard. So I sort of have an unlimited supply that just keeps going and going of Lapia. So in a quick summary, Lapia is a native ground cover for Southern California and possibly other regions of the United States that is affordable, hardly needs any water, grows really quickly, is pollinator friendly, and stays green in the summer. What's not to like about it? All right, you all. Uh, this is a longer video than I expected. Just been really happy with this plant. If you're looking for a lawn alternative, look into Lapia phyllonotiflora. Feel free to ask me questions. I'll try to do a follow-up video with some more detail and information on my setup. Thanks.